the uh, private sector and the daycare industry, uh, a friend of mine in Summerside is in that predicament. I think immediately that if when when the Conservatives get back in power next fall, I would ask that that act or the regulations that were put in place in regards to the daycare center be immediately halted and reviewed. And what she's talking about is the Gibbs government brought in regulation to to limit and structure and standardize the daycare center in the province of Prince Edward Island. What they did is they did it to their own specs without looking at what is actually required by industry. And what that's causing is the, um, the small businesses that have these daycares, it's going to put them out of business um, because they can't run it the way it is presently structured by the Giz government. My commitment would be to, to hold on that agreement and to call it a stop and have a review of it. Olive Craig. Thank you, Norma. Um, excuse me, can you hear me? Is the mic on? Okay. Thank you, Norma. As a parent and a working mom of three kids, uh, child care is so important. In order to have an economy, child care is so important. In terms of the present GIS government, they made changes to the child care sector once again without consulting or working within the sector. My commitment would be to actually work with the sector and also not only invest in for the parents, but also for the private sector businesses as well. Thank you. And Jamie Ball. I think, Norma, we have a precedent already in the system in, in our long-term care beds, our nursing home beds, where 50% roughly are private sector and 50% are, are government owned. In that case, the, wherever the resident is living, they pay the same rate. So parents would, should be able to pay the same rate, and then government tops it up so the private sector will have the same level playing field as the public sector. If you're operating a business that people want to take their children to, you're offering quality programs, then they should be allowed to take it to a private sector or public sector. It's their choice, and I think you should be given the same opportunities and the same funding as a public sector would get. All right, and uh, Fred McCarty. Uh, in discussions with the uh, government people, they tell me that the people that did not qualify for that government assistance, they have been given alternatives to bring their business up to that standard. So I would work with those businesses to see if we could, government could assist them to reaching the, the standard curricular requirements that are required by the program. And Peter Llewellyn. I think one of the first things we need to start doing is setting the standard as what's best for the child. We talk about what's best for government, and what's best for the different operators. You know, if we put what's best for the child first, a lot of these questions are going to be answered. And now, Norma, I know a lot of people that have been left out are questioning what was the standard and was used to exclude them. The standard hasn't been the care, of the quality of the care or the teaching that they were getting. So we need to go back in and put the child first. And you, with the child first, you're going to start to see some of these centers being given the opportunity because parents are making decisions to send their children there because they've looked at it and they understand that their kid, kids are getting good care. We need to support private. If we're going to support the government operations, then we cannot do it at the expense of the private operator either. So I see us going back in there and re-looking at that immediately. All right, thank you candidates for your responses.